have I made a huge mistake all these years by not rotating my crops year to year? Hey guys, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. I get asked the question so many times, and I've never done a video on it, so I think it's about time. Do you rotate your crops? And my answer is, according to the traditional method, no, I actually don't. And the reason I give that answer, and the reason I don't do it, now I don't grow the same exact crops except for the tomatoes because I have the trellis set up, and so I always grow them in the same place. Uh, everything else and all the other beds, they kind of get rotated. I don't have a specific bed for each thing, except for my winter crops, which due to lower light, I have to kind of grow them in the same beds every year. <coughs> but I do switch things up a little bit in the summer, not following any strict traditional crop rotation guidelines. And my reason is every season, so twice a year, I add a three inch layer of compost to the top of my beds. That adds back any nutrients, micronutrients, all the trace element that the, the plants may have taken that season and, and adds them back to the soil. It also creates a nice, thick, physical barrier between whatever pathogens, whatever soil borne diseases are in the soil from last year, the year before, and it puts a physical barrier down to keep them from uh, being splashed up onto plants and then continuing that disease flourish on those plants. Now I have a couple things in my favor in addition to the mulch. Number one, I use drip irrigation so the, the leaves do not get wet. And number two, we don't get rain in the summer. So I don't have the splash up effect that some of you who um, do get rain throughout the summer will have. So especially if you don't put down mulch, you do need to rotate your crops. Crop rotation is one of the oldest farming gardening methods there is. Uh, it's been in practice for who knows, thousands and thousands of years. And it's basically not growing crops in the same place, the same type of crop for about four years. The thought is a lot of the soil borne diseases and pests will live and stay in the soil for one to four years. And so if you do a four year rotation, then that first crop that was grown in that bed four years ago on the fifth year will come back into that spot and all of its favorite pests and diseases that like that type of plant will no longer be there. Another benefit of crop rotation is the fertility of the soil. There are certain types of crops that take certain things out of the soil. And there are also crops like legumes that put nutrients back in. So rotating those around in the proper way would keep the soil nutrients balanced. Now, like I said, I have reasons that I haven't done that in the past. However, this is a small space garden. Now, it's all relative, I know. But compared to what I'm going into, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to start practicing crop rotation because I'm not going to be able to afford to put a three inch layer of good compost down twice a year on a much bigger space. I will still be growing with drip, um, so that will be in my favor but I do think crop rotation is going to come into play. So I wanted to finally do a video on it. Now to rotate your crops, you first need to know the plant families because each family would have a different spot each year. So starting off with the nightshades and that is tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, and potatoes, but potatoes would fall under the root category, which we'll get to in a minute. Then there is the cucurbit family, which is your squash, melons, pumpkins, gourds, cucumbers. That would be its own family. The next family would be the legumes, which is peas, beans, you know, fava beans, cow peas, uh, all the different types of clovers that you might use as cover crops. And our favorite legume of all, hairy vetch. 
I snuck it into another video. <laughs> and then the last family would be the brassicas. So cauliflower, broccoli, kohlrabi, kale, um, mustard, all of those would be in their own space as well. So that's four different plant families. So traditionally, you would have four separate areas of your garden, and you would start those plant families in one of those areas, and then the next year, they would rotate. The next year, they would rotate. The next year, they would rotate. And then, that next year, they would all come back to their home spot, right? And by that time, hopefully, the pests and diseases will have dissipated, and that whole process can go again. Now, keeping all of that straight is what causes most gardeners to give up on the second year. I was one of those. So how do we take all this into account and simplify it to take advantage of the rotation and of having the proper plants for the proper nutrients at any given time? Just remember legumes, leaf, fruit, root. Legumes, leaf, fruit, root. Legumes, leaf, fruit, root. In that order. Now, legumes, like we already talked about, beans, peas, all of that. Leaves would be any of the lettuces, spinach, greens, uh, kale. Um, in this scenario, we're going to put broccoli and cauliflower in the leaves section. These are all plants that take a lot of nitrogen to produce the part of the plant that we eat. Now, in broccoli uh, and cauliflower, you can eat the leaves, but we also eat the flowers, but we're gonna throw them into the leaves because they take a lot of nitrogen from the soil. Fruits, those would be tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, squashes, anything that we actually eat, the fruit of the plant, that would go in the fruit category. And then the last one would be the roots, and that would be garlic, onions, turnips, carrots, beets, radishes, and potatoes. Now here is how the cycle works. We start off with legumes. Legumes fix nitrogen in the soil and leave it for the next crop. Some better than others. Um, clovers and peas do a much better job than pole beans or bush beans, but we're not gonna get that technical. So legumes fix nitrogen in the soil. The next year, the best crop to put there would be the leaves because they take a lot of nitrogen to build all the leaves that we want to eat. They don't take much phosphorus or potassium. After the leaf crop, the next year, we would put in fruits. And because the fruits need a lot of phosphorus, not so much nitrogen. You get where this is going? And then the next year in that spot would be the roots because they don't need a lot of nitrogen. They don't need a lot of phosphorus, but they do need a lot of potassium. So that's four years. The fifth year, the, the legumes come back in, plump up the soil again with their nitrogen, and the cycle continues. So for me, that's the method that I'm gonna be following at our new house because it just, number one, it makes sense. Number two, it's easier to remember. And this method not only plans for you know, the nutrients in the soil, but it also switches up the planting from year to year so that any one pest or disease doesn't flourish and has time to dissipate before the crop that it loves comes back. The bottom line of all this is just to mix up the planting from year to year in a way that relieves you from some of the effort that you have to put into gardening. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be done by the book. Keep an eye out for disease and pests, and if they start to build up, move that crop. I will probably still grow my tomatoes in the same bed every year because it's easier for me to not have to move the trellis around. If that becomes a problem, then I adjust as necessary. But so far, it hasn't. And tomatoes will probably be the one bed that I actually do continue to put that mulch on every season, and of course, water with drip. So just keep all these things in mind. Don't get too technical or stressed out about the whole thing because that just takes the fun out of gardening and then what's the use, right? If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.